Welcome to Fresh Death Comics. I'm your host, B. Luke. With me, as always, is Hans. Hans, you've had a pretty exciting week. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing good. You want to tell the listeners what you've been up to? Well, I went on a little trip. Me and my father went to uh, the great state of Missouri, and we uh, visited Kansas City and St. Louis. What were you doing there? We caught a couple of ball games. Basket. Potential World Series opponent. Oh, so baseball games. Yes. Very cool. So you saw the Kansas State Warriors? <laughs> Do you want me to say it? Yeah, tell, tell the people your story. I mean, uh, as, as a person who may not know about football, I mean, just Do you mean baseball? Baseball. The sports? The, all, all of the sports. Well, we saw uh, Kansas City play the Chicago White Sox. A heated rivalry that we saw in Chicago earlier this year. Oh, that's the one with the, the fights. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. And we saw the St. Louis Cardinals take on the Chicago Cubs, both division rival games. So mm-hmm. they were really good. Very good. So we live in the state of New York. Correct. You traveled how, 16 hours? 16, 17 hours, yeah. To go there. Why all of a sudden just to go there? Just to see these two potential World Series players play? Well, they had uh, special bobblehead nights. Ooh, yeah. Saint, are Saint fun. Louis had the the Harry Carey bobblehead, and it contained the call of Stan Musial's three thousandth hit, which was really cool. Yeah, you actually showed it to me. It's pro. I, I, looking back, I kind of wish I would have went just for the bobblehead. The bobblehead is fantastic. Um, if you don't know who he is, Will Ferrell played him on SNL. Yes. And it's it's not just a, a 30 second clip. It goes on for what? Maybe over a, a good minute. Good minute, minute and a half. Yes. Yeah, so, so, it's a long time. But but it's a quality quality clip. Yeah, and you and it's easy at the battery out, so if you do want to replace so it. So if you, you use can. it too many times, you know. I mean, for me, I would use it every day. I saw it like, "Good morning, Harry," and click the button. <laughs> That'd be fun. And then he'd be like talking to you, like, "Yeah, well, it's good. It's new today, Harry." And he's like, "The ball went over the court and out of the wind." And he'd be like, "Oh man, it's, uh, this gets me pumped up for the day." Yeah, yeah, pumped up for the Phillies next year. All right, same with uh, my Braves. But what are you gonna do? We're gonna do. Uh, right now, I need to pump myself up because it was a bad week for sports for me. I'm not. It was what happened? Well, I'm. I'm not. As good of sports as you are, like okay. knowing players and right. different things. I know the Eagles. I know yeah. some Greenback players. So I played based on what I know and what I found from experts. Okay. And we faced each other just we like we did. told you last week. We told you there was a pie involved for the loser. It was a very close match. Sa- I give you credit. You I, had me worried. I, I tried my hardest. Like you, you don't understand. Sunday morning, before church, I'm up at like 5 a.m. scouring the news, trying to find people. Because the one guy, the one tight end I had, Zach Ertz, he was questionable. So I didn't want to call anyone at Sports Center. Honestly, I think all Eagles are questionable. But carry on. I didn't want to call anyone at Sports Center and ask them because you don't know well what kind of response you're going to get. I mean, how do how does he know? I didn't want to call Zach Ertz because I don't have his phone number. You don't? I don't. Oh. Um, I, I feel... Um, I probably could have tweeted at him, but he's not yeah, going to take yeah. time to tweet back at me. So, I... He's a little busy on Sunday. I, I found this guy, Jordan Reed, and I was like, this looks like a good pick. I'm going to pick him up. It was the best choice I had. He was fantastic. He did... I think he scored the second or third amount of points for me. Nice. So, uh, d- I, it was the one accomplishment I had. Why other picks I did either... Everyone got hurt... Or uh, decided to not play football. You know yeah. what I'm saying, Hans? I don't know where you're headed with this, man. I, I, I just wanted to express my thoughts of fantasy football. All I know is you lost and you get a pie in the face. Uh, I'm not... As soon as we're done filming or recording... As soon as we're done recording, we're going to film the pie in the face, so look for us... Now, like, now, do you want that blueberry pie heated up? Absolutely not. No? I don't, I don't want hot blueberries on my face. Okay. So, uh, if you... You've probably already seen on Facebook the picture of the pie, but we'll keep just keep watching Facebook. We'll post a link uh, to the video, and I'm not looking. I'm not excited for it. 
I don't know how bad blueberry stains the face. We'll find out. I'm not looking forward to a pie in the face, but unfortunately, I am a man of my word, and I will have a pie in my face by the end of the night. Yes! So, on other good news, uh, our good friends, uh, via television, not in real life, Gary Busey is back on television. I'm really excited. Celebrity Apprentice, I didn't really watch it. Unless Gary Busey's on it. Gary Busey is by far one of the greatest people who ever lived. He is an entertainer. He is. When you watch somebody and they go, oh, I entertain people for a living. They're kind of boring. They get on there. They'll, you know, maybe their, their movies are great, you know, shooting up scenes and stuff. But when you meet the actual person, yeah, they might be fun. They might crack a couple of jokes. But they're always very PC, you know, very nice. Gary Busey, he just says whatever comes out of his mouth. And I love it. You know what? If I was a child today and I was having a birthday party, I would say, Mom, Mom, can we get Gary Busey? We need to get Gary Busey. As a child, you want to do that? Yeah. That I want to do that now as an adult. That would be the greatest birthday party ever. an adult ever. birthday party and invite Gary Busey to it. He because is outrageous and I don't know. I just don't know. So we watched uh, we watched Dancing a Star with the Stars a little bit to see. Um, Steve Irwin's kid did really good. Uh, Mindy Irwin, she 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 danced fantastically. I was quite surprised. Uh, but man, the work Gary Busey. I, I'll tell you what, Let's Gary had a house. lot of fun out he there. He did. Uh, when I, even in the studio, she asked him if he was breathing. <laughs> she asked him if he was breathing. And he goes, yeah, how else how would I be alive? <laughs> That's just the funniest thing in the world. Because she, she wants him to be breathing while he's dancing. And he's just like not understanding it. And then when she gives him the concept of what dancing is, like dancing is just like another language. Like his mind is blown. Like he's in the chair and he's just like, <gasps> Yeah, he absolutely loved that. Like, and I mean, it's a good, it's a good perspective, I guess. I guess, but it's just like anything. Any new job you get, it's a new language. Right. But but she just wanted him to know that, yeah, that he, he was, was doing, doing fine. Because he was for getting frustrated was. and but his dan I mean he do you think he was a good dancer? Well, I I don't wanna be negative. But he looked a little uncoordinated out there, but I think he did great. I think for the first He did better than I would, I'm sure. First time dancing in public, he's also a little bit older. He did fantastic. I mean, I, I looking at it, uh, like they have Nick Carter on it. They have different people who, yeah, it's kind of rich to d- dancing. So I, I don't rich, know man. how you can get Nick Carter of the Backstreet Boys and who's doing all this ca- choreograph on stage. You know, for him, it's just oh, I, I remember this from my days. So I have to, you know, just remember how it used to be. So is it a grade curve wise? Like, is there a handicap involved? No, like, I don't think so. You know, him and Paula Dean, they've never danced professionally, so they get plus eight. But, yeah, Kerry Busey, I, my prediction is going to make it four weeks. The fourth week will be his last four week. Four weeks? Four weeks. Wow. That, that's my prediction. Which I yours? mean, they're definitely bringing in a different audience having Gary Busey on the show. But I'm only watching the Gary Busey clip anyway, so it doesn't matter. No, I and that's the thing. How many people are sh- like shifting uh, who watch because when Celebrity Apprentice was on with Gary Busey, I know the numbers were quite high, and then once he left, the numbers drifted down a little bit. Not a whole bunch, mind you. It's not enough to say like, oh, he made the whole show, but they did see the numbers go down. He was a huge entertainment value. Yeah, he was the pepperoni profit. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Oh gosh. I would love to have Gary Busey on the show. I'd love to be friends with him. I think Gary would love to be friends with you, too. He would ride the cosmic waves of life. We are back with Brian's mom. Hello. Hi, mom. How are you? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Hans? I'm good. You're I'm good. glad You're everybody's good. good. Oh, we're so good. We're everybody's great. Good. We'll see how you are. We're going to play a new game with you. Oh. Would you rather... So we're going to, basic rules of 
would you rather? You have to choose one of the options. There's no way out of it. Okay. You got to choose. So Do you have to guess what I'm going to choose? No, no. no, you, no. You're just going to so tell I'm us. I'm just going to say. So we'll start off with something maybe a little bit easy. Okay. Would you rather spend four hours in a car with no air conditioning on a very, very hot day? So Is the know, windows open? Nope, they're closed. Do you have a phone? I'm calling 911 on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're 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 the one driving. You're driving four hours. Boy, in a car. am I stupid not to put down the window. <laughs> that, that's, that's the option. Apparently, I'm your the windows Alzheimer's behind the wheel. Your, oh, <laughs> or watch a football game. Watch a football game. At least I'm comfortable, and you bring snacks. <laughs> <laughs> and you said she hated football so much. I know. I, I banked on it. I I'm banked not on you. Roast in the car. <laughs> All right. Let's let's. Uh, here's the next one. Would you rather have dinner with Donald Trump or brunch with Barack Obama? Trump. I'll tell him how arrogant he is. While Obama's <laughs> getting out. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna tell Trump what's what? Yes, he needs to be told. He needs a swift kick in the butt. <laughs> How arrogant that man is. Would you rather be saved by Batman or Spider Man? Batman. I don't like bugs. <laughs> so just the premise that he's Yes, he'll but have he's not webs a, and they'll be sticky. <laughs> well that's what Spider Man has his webs. I but know they're, it, they're sticky. <laughs> like it, it bug. Would you rather be trapped on an island with Harrison Ford or Tom Hanks? Harrison Ford, because I like National Treasure, and we could probably find something there. That was Nicolas Cage. Oh, I was close. Harrison <laughs> Ford is the guy from For Star, Star Wars. Star Wars, oh yeah. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. Tom Hanks lost it on that island with that basketball. <laughs> so you I'd think rather if you have were... somebody, at least he's going to keep their sanity. <laughs> Well, Harrison Ford was on an island that seven days and six nights. I know. It was boring, but at least he kept the sanity. So Harrison Ford? Yeah. All right. Last question. Fight off an elephant-sized bee or 300 bee-sized elephants? Bee-sized elephants? Oh, how cute. I would hug them and love them and call them George. <laughs> well, there's so many of them. But they're little elephants. They're all right. They don't sting. But they're going to get water all up in their, their, their trunk. trunk. Well, that's all right. And then it's they're going to just spray day. you with 300 elephants just spraying you with oh, the... Oh, how cute. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, that's just like a shower head. Yeah, they're all right. This has been Games with Brian's Mom. Thanks so much for joining us again. I hope the questions weren't too tough. Hey, Hans. Hey, what, Brian? Hey, you know what time it is? What time is it? Our pick of the week. It's about 4 o'clock. Now it is 4 o'clock. Time for our pick of the week. So this week was a difficult one for me. We kind of discussed what books we were going to pick before time. And I will pick a different book just because I, I feel that like we should give a couple of different options. But my pick is maybe better than mine. About the same. I'm, I'm just excited about my pick as Hans's pick. So Hans, what pick? is your number one this week and what might be mine depending on how this episode <laughs> turns out because like i said i'm on the edge i have one picked out just because you have the same one i feel we should have different ones well my pick of the week is tokyo ghost issue one by rick remender why is that now your number one because it's rick remender i know nothing about this book going in i am trusting rick remender to give me a good story like he always does and for me i like it I know a little bit about the story and just like a synopsis of it. It's just something I read where it's a wide view. I'm not going to share, share it because I don't want to ruin it for Hans. But that and also the artist, Sean Murphy, he is the same guy who did The Wake and the artwork is amazing. So you're basically having one of the best writers in comics with, I want to say, one of the best artists in comics together on a book. Did you say one of the best writers? Yes. Just one of them? Not the best? I, there's a lot of... Which is going to be my the reason for my second pick. There's a lot of good writers out there. I can't say that Rick Remender has ever let me down. See, I, I've read a couple of books that haven't been that great. What are they? You want me to tell you? Yes, I do. I didn't enjoy Low. Well, you're an idiot, sir. <laughs> and that's a great comics. I, I, it's okay for me not to like a book. On Kenny Avengers... No, I think it's wrong for you not to like that book. 
Uncanny Avengers wasn't that good either. Oh, I didn't read that. Yeah, once they, <laughs> once they, like he started on this great roller coaster ride. It went, you know, they had Nazis and Hitler in it, and it was like, what's going on? This is great. And then he destroyed everything. And once he destroyed everything, like he destroyed the whole Marvel universe. And then he brought it back. You know what? I mean, that's okay. They're doing it again anyway. Yeah, so but, what's the problem? Well, the problem is once he destroyed it, it was just like, oh no, what should I do? And his resolution to fix it wasn't great. I think they just should have just ended it with him destroying the universe. Since Secret Wars was already going to destroy it. And then Marvel Comics are done forever! Hopefully not. There's my, 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 my choice of the week is a Marvel book. Uh-oh. What is My, it? Captain America White by Jeff Loeb and artist Tim Sale. Okay. What uh, do you like about it? Jeff Loeb. Jeff Loeb is one of my favorite writers in comics. Uh, you know, I've met him in, in person at, at Chicago a few years back. He's one of the nicest guys to talk to. His books are great. They always leave me on a great adventure. They always leave me high and happy. But I'm really excited because of this is a continuation of his red, white, and blue kind of series in yellow that he did, a uh, Spider-Man blue, uh, Daredevil yellow, um, Hulk gray, Hulk gray. It was a Hulk gray. Okay, I thought there was a there's no red one. I don't know, I got Captain America red, white, and blue stuck in my head. Well, see, what's interesting here is people have been waiting on this book for how many years? For about five years, at least. At least, yeah. And they came out with uh, issue zero of Captain America White, and it's just been sitting there with no resolution or anything. I don't even know if it's a continuation of that or not. It is. Do you it's, need it? It's Do a, you need to know? It is a continuation of issue zero, but the nice thing about... You, you saw the book. It was very thick. Yeah. It contains issue zero and issue one. Oh, really? It does. So well, that's cool. So it kind of you don't need to hunt it down. You don't need to open your you know comic vault and try to find it. It's already in there. Now it'd be nice to have it just for collector wise. Yeah, sure. You know, um, it's the, basically the first printing of the book. But you don't. You can just read that book and be fine. And I'm excited. And also, Tim Sale, uh, Heroes comes out next week on NBC. The season premiere. Of the new reboot of Heroes. So I've been watching the old Heroes. That's next week. It's next week. A little neato. So I've been watching the old Heroes reruns and Tim Sale's arts plays a major part in the show. So I've kind of gotten this whole thing like I really love Tim Sale. I love his art. So for me, I'm also buying it for the art of Tim Sale because I love Heroes. And I also it made me remember like how much I love Tim Sale and why. For me, those two combo factors hit together makes it my pick of the week but your your choice is absolutely not a wrong choice to make um, it I never mean, is it, <laughs> I don't know Magneto is kind of a letdown why because he died it's a good story which is what you want in a book now which brings me to a question a little bit off topic but when they fix the world should that Magneto come back or should it be a different Magneto. When they fix the worlds and put them together, because it's happening in, in about a month, they're doing the new number ones with all new teams. Do you want to see that Magneto back, or would you, you Honestly, think his I story's don't care. done? Um, I think the book ended in a very good position that I, I don't want to come back and read any more Magneto stories. So I, I may not want to come back and read any more Marvel stories. For you, you know, maybe Magneto, your story with Magneto might be done and finished, but, you know, put it on hold. Let, let's get you something else. Let, let's find you a book. Maybe you weren't going to, maybe The Vision. You know, The Vision seems a pretty interesting guy. Read that. You know, venture out of your comfort zone of what you think will be a good book and try something out. Try something new in life. Isn't that that's, what creator-owned projects are for? That's what life is for, sir. <laughs> Always trying out something new. Don't get stuck in the mo- mundane things you know you think magneto's done fine put it in there and let's work on something else read a book do something you haven't done before you know take life and enjoy it enjoy like gary gary Busey has inspired me to live life take read a book ask a girl go to the movies try dancing for the first time go on a boat i just see a sign for square dancing we can sign up do square dancing yeah you do something. 
That's my goal. Next time you listen to us, do something different, something you haven't done before. And this has been Life Lessons with Brian Luke. I'm co-host Hans. Thank you for joining us. Bye!